and upload it to YouTube. It just takes takes some time. I got a pretty cool uh, treadmill video I shot today. Mm -hmm. Ten minutes long, so it gives a good insight of like how a training session went with the treadmill. Nice. Yeah, it'll be pretty fun. Hey, All, right. All right, guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Next question with Vinny and Jenna Lee. His camera's a little too much on Jenna Lee. I just like that. Remember, I'm the, I'm the main one of the show. Okay, big dog, how you doing? Beautiful. So, <clears throat> as we get set up here, we're going to just start rambling off a lot of questions. Um, I actually did not see any of these. Uh, sometimes I, I, I see some of them when I'm working. I see somebody post one, so when I'm driving, I'll check it out. At a stop sign, of course. But today, I don't know any of these, so hopefully we... I didn't filter through them either, so if you see one that's dumb, just let me know. Nick Schnee. Let's get rocking. Okay. Yes, ma'am. We have a new puppy, and Ella loves her, but play a little too rough at times. What is the best thing to do in that case, crate or training session? So that's a great question. If you have two dogs and they start playing a little too rough, whoever is... The, you have two options here, so you don't want to crate them like they're in, in a punishment zone. That's not the right answer. So if I have one dog who's really pushing the pace and the other dog's starting to get annoyed, I'll put a leash on him to say, hey, you're done, now you focus on me. You could go into an immediate training session, but you could also practice your downstay with your older dog, and it sounds like the older dog's the one being a little too rough. Um, is that correct? Yeah, it, it, it's the older one being a little bit too rough, and that's okay. So you, your dog has to learn how to play with a puppy. You are just coaching her through. So as soon as she starts to screw up and get too rough, you immediately redirect into a nice little down, tell her stay, or place, tell her stay. But what's the issue, Jay? What's the puppy get, then gonna wanna do? The puppies wanna come back for more. So then you gotta take the puppy on leash and say, okay, you come over here for a second, and we let them play again. Easiest way to do this, though, is get them both somewhat tired first by taking them on a walk. Then they play significantly less rough when they're tired. Next question. How do I get my puppy, four month old golden? Awesome, awesome dog, awesome breed, yeah. From play, play biting our Bernice Mountain dog, the burner just stands there, what? <laughs> it's the same question, keep me up, yeah. Uh, just stands there and lets the pup bite his neck, paws, mm -hmm. ears, feet, etc. We tell her no and pull her away, but any three minutes she gets, she is going to him. It's not aggressive, nah. but her razor sharp teeth have given the burner scabs on it his neck It is not ears. your Bernese Mountain Dog's job to correct your puppy for playing too rough. So your Bernese Mountain Dog's just a great dog, right? He's just sitting there going, oh, this guy's just gonna chew on my neck like I'm a, a doggy chew toy. <laughs> Um, but that's your job. So keep a drag leash on your dog at all times in the house, the puppy. As soon as your puppy starts getting too rough, take the dog. Take Same exact answer as this last one. But this one's easier because you only have one dog pushing the pace on play, not two of them. So you just immediately redirect and, and your dog's got to also get around more dogs, more social. Um, try to get around small dogs, big dogs, and your dog can figure a lot more social skills out that way too. Next question. My dog barks in our face when he is bored or wants to go out. How can we stop this? So why is your dog bored? Why are you not doing more with them, right? So when you have a dog who's bored, who's barking at you, the first thing you gotta ask is, have, what have I done productive today with my dog? What have I done productive? If I haven't walked him, if I haven't done obedience training, if I didn't put him on the treadmill, I didn't do search training, I didn't do something with him, he should bark in the face. Hell, he should jump up on the couch and smack me in the face with his paw, because I didn't do enough. When your dog is bored, don't look, at a, don't look at correcting the outcome of a problem. Start correcting the actual problem, which is the boredom. Take the time it takes to train the dog daily for training sessions. 45 minutes of leash walking is a minimum daily, and 45 minutes of obedience training is a minimum daily. If you're not reach, reaching that, then, I, then you should bark in your face. Next question. How can I start socializing my four-year-old chocolate lab who has never been around other dogs for play aside from his brother? Well, so here's what I would say. You need to get them around other dogs on leash in a controlled setting, right? So if I have, personally, if, if a client says, hey, I have a four-year-old dog and he's not socialized and he's not good around other dogs, cool, that's great. You don't just go throw him into a dog park and say, all right, let's see what happens, right? What I do is I first fix leash skills. You'll hear me go back to the basics all the time. Why do I go back to the basics? If my dog sucks at the basics, he's gonna suck at the intermediate and he's gonna suck at the advanced stuff, right? So I go back to basics, I fix my dog's leash skills, then I take him actively around new dogs on leash. I'll go to the park, I'll go to, um, I'll go to a brewery with other dogs, but I'll just let him play. I let him socialize by being around them. Then as time gets better, then we start to meet up, then we start to let him sniff dogs on, you know, on leash. Then maybe we let him start to play with dogs as he's getting better, but it's a slow progression. Do not rush this because we, we and this is why it's so important to socialize early. I do like the fact that, you, Excuse me, even though he's four years old, you're looking to fix this. That's a beautiful thing. Next question. 
By the way, a lot of our clients um, who train with us, we have a Say It Once Dog community page. Once you've had a training session with us, you can go to the community page and find someone there who also is dealing with the same thing. Right. You guys can meet up and work together. This, once again, doesn't mean you unclip the leash and let them go, but you can, you can work together around other dogs more frequently. Next question. Not really a dog training question, but my dog always has a toy or a bone in her mouth when she greets us or yeah. others, but she's not trying to play. It's so adorable. Do you know why she does this? Yeah, so here's the thing. If your dog does anything that's cute, realize it's probably not good, right? So your dog gets a toy in your mouth when they come home because they're overexcited, right? It's like a binky. I don't know what to do, I don't know what to do. All right, I'm good now, right? Because they need that binky in their mouth. I would never punish them for this, but I wouldn't reward them. So when you walk into the house and you go, oh, did you get your toy? You're just egging them on. I, I, for me, just walk in the house, walk right by them. What did he do right? Probably nothing, so no big deal at all. But that all comes from overexcitement and getting rewarded as soon as we walk into the house. There's no reason for it. It's not a bad thing. It's just not necessary. Next question. Mm -hmm. My 10 month old American Staffordshire mm -hmm. nice Bull Terrier mm -hmm. wheezes all over the place when he gets excited. When we come home or when he thinks he is in trouble for something like chewing something up, we have started not petting him That's and good. letting him outside right away when we come home and it has helped a little, but if someone new comes to the house, he dribbles all over the place. Will he grow out of this? No, but he'll train out of this. A lot of people ask questions like this too. Will my, when will my dog grow up? Probably never, you're gonna have to train him out. And how do you do this? You have to practice meeting a thousand people. So when you guys come home, same thing like the last person, make no, mu no, no muss, no fuss. I walk in the house, Get the hex away from me, no big deal. Other people have to do the same thing. Make sure I'm not going, who's here, who's here, here, see it, daddy's here, mommy's here, and get my dog amped up, amped up, they walk in, squirt. They get so overexcited, they just can't help themselves that they just go, ah. Now, this, this dog sounded like he was chewing something, I can't remember what it was, but if he is, your dog should be in the crate when you leave. You should come home, your dog should be in the crate. You should only let him out when he's calm. It should be super, super. Yeah, he, it says he thinks he's in trouble from chewing something. Well, don't give him, put him back into the crate when you leave. Next question. Oh, by the way, you need to socialize your dog a heck of a lot more. Go out to a lo local shopping plaza on, hey, talk to everybody. So if I were to meet Jenna Lee, how you doing? My name's Vinny. Ignore my dog. She's in training, right? Jenna Lee's got a really girly handshake. I just figured that's a, it's a weak <laughs> handshake. Oh, my female clients are going to yell at me. It's not girly. It's not girly. I'm sorry. I didn't mean it like that. But well, you don't have to break my hand either. She, um, what do you mean? You don't. Dude, my dad used to yell at me. That's, you know, I was like 12 years old. I shook somebody's hand. You shake somebody's hand and you look them in the eye firmly. Okay, facts there. Anyway, off the top. Cops are off. Let's go. <laughs> my 10-year-old French bulldog pees in the house constantly. Uh-huh. I've tried everything and I'm beginning to think he's just stubborn. Any tips would help. I've tried treats after he goes outside. I've tried punishment when he goes inside. I can't even take a shower without having to kennel him for that short amount of time. Any tips are appreciated. Uh, so two things, make sure you work on your handshake so it's not weak like Jenna Lee's. Second thing that I want, a big time one, your dog, your 10 year old dog, you're going to treat like a 10 week old puppy. If your 10 year old dog's peeing in the house, he's in the crate. You're using baby gates in your house and you're never letting him out of the sight. Most people let the dog out of the sight. He pees in the other room and goes, son of a gun, the dog poo. Restraint there. Restraint. He peed in the other room. It's like, well, why are you giving him freedom? He should, you should never be able to get out of my sight. I'm right next to you. You take your dog out, he pees outside. You treat him the second he is done or he is peeing. You don't treat him when we come back into the house. There's no use to taking a dog's face and shoving it, right? And shoving his face in and put him in there. You shut up, you shut up. Your dog's in, he's not smart enough to get it. If that worked, that'd be great, but it doesn't work. So don't do it. You're just wasting energy and you're actually really he's hampering. Moved on. <laughs> exactly, and you're hampering your relationship with your dog. But keep your dog in the crate when you take a shower. Who cares? Keep your dog in, or bring him with you, but you can't watch him in the shower, so guess what? Right. He goes into the crate. He goes into the crate if you're gonna go cook dinner. You can't keep an eye on him. When we eat dinner, he's crated in, or he's uh, gated in, in with me. Uh, that's the biggest thing for that one. Next question. You know what they say, Jay? And I, I tell this joke frequently. This is actually a real dog training tip. Hold on. <laughs> if your dog pees in the house, and he pees in the other room because you weren't washing him, the easiest way to correct yourself, I like to use a 36 ounce, 32 inch baseball bat for my dog. And if he pees away from me in the other room, I take the baseball bat and I just bash it on my head until I'm knocked unconscious because I let him out of my sight. Next question. Hi, I have an eight month old puppy. We kind of, oh, let me start over. 
Hi, I have an eight month old puppy. What kind of leash or collar do you prefer when trying to walk her? She weighs 35 pounds. Awesome. We tried in the fall walking her. She did nothing but jump and bite the whole mm -hmm. time. Yep. Want to try it all over again. Needs something she can't get out of. Mm -hmm. Had her at puppy classes. She backed right out of the one we had. Very scary. So uh, Linda, what I would suggest is, I. so for me, the, I hate saying this on the show, like right. hire a trainer. You should hire a trainer, right? Because it, this would make you feel more comfortable. But here's what I would say. Eight month old puppy is 35 pounds. Get a leather leash, four to six, in, uh, four to six feet, or get a biothan leash, four to six feet. I would probably start with a small star mark training collar, fit extremely snug, up high and tight. I would start practicing obedience sessions on the walk without anything around, keep it light, easy, happy-go-lucky, reward your dog every time they sit down, make them focus on turns and whatnot. We put a boatload of videos up on our Facebook page of this. But that's what I would suggest. I would not use a harness, I would use a training collar. But if you don't understand how to use it, call us. Or call a tra dog training professional. If they tell you to put a harness on, walk away. Next question. Now, why is a harness bad? A harness is bad because it was created for pulling, just so everybody's on the same page. Harnesses were created for dogs to pull sleds, wagon, cart, people, the whole nine yards. If I put, and they make, oh, now they make front clip harnesses, use it. Oh, great, now it's a bigger band-aid. You know what I mean? It's like, that's not fixing my problem, my dog not. The walk is not about not dragging my ass down the road. The walk is about engaging with me. If they're not looking and paying attention and asking for things, I shouldn't even go on a walk. That's the whole point. It's not to sniff and to, and to have them read the newspaper outside. And a lot of people say, a lot of trainers say, you know, the walk is for, it's bullshit. The walk is a job. The walk is so we can focus on me. The walk is so we can di get something done and be productive. Mental stimulation. Next question. Little rant, little rant, okay. little rant. What do just you so you know, I just drank this. This I has know, it's energy. It's my last one. Was it? Yes. Oh, beautiful. Uh, that's why it tasted so good. Uh, a lot of energy from that though. A lot of energy. Next question. What do you recommend when walking dogs outside in the cold? We were outside walking for 15 minutes yesterday mm -hmm. and our Samoyed, Samoyed yep. paws got so cold she couldn't walk and my fiance had to carry her back to the house. Mm -hmm. We felt so bad. Probably wasn't that and I'll explain what it was. But yep. never thought 15 minutes out walking with us would do that. How it, long do you recommend? It probably wasn't the cold. It was probably your dogs got uh, either snow matted in their paw or salt matted in their paw. Use mushers, wax, or booties. I hate booties. I'm a big mushers, wax yeah. guy. It's on Amazon, on Chewy.com, you take the wax, you slab That's it great. on there, and it's a nice protective coat. So uh, what I would say, in a Samoyed, I mean, the dog was bred to be in the snow, but make sure your dog also doesn't have a, a huge excess amount of fur coming out of the pads. Yeah, you gotta make sure you're, you're grooming them and trimming that stuff up. So, um, your question was, what's too cold or how much can we do, so on and so forth. That should answer that. If it's salty, make sure you're getting booties or you're getting the, the wax. For me, what I, what I would say is anything over 20 degrees, I'm going out with my dogs. My dogs can make it. Xena, I would go out in just about any temperature. Like it's 15 degrees when I wake up in the morning. She's out laying in the yeah, snow. Just, the winter dogs like the Samoyed want to be out and hang out in the snow, huskies, so on and so forth. Thurman is a very short coat guy. So if, if it's like, say it's 21 degrees, we'll do 15, 20 minutes and that's it, right? And that's all he's gonna be able to do. Um, but we also do it quick because I get a lot of blood flowing because I want them moving, I want them yeah. working. Um, so anything over 25, any dog is pretty good except the hairless ones. Um, under 20, you just gotta be really careful unless you have a, a winter type dog. Next question, Arctic. During training, my puppy gets overexcited about any type of treat and cannot concentrate on what she's supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. yeah. What do we do to calm her down? No, you don't want to calm her down, Jay. Push harder? No, you don't want to push harder either. So if you have a dog who gets, dude, you have the dog that everybody wants. If your dog is treat motivated and has a high drive, that's the dog that people want. So if my dog's overly treat motivated uh, and he's kind of not focusing, my treat value is too high. Use kibble. Just use kibble as your treat. Right, that's good enough that the dog will do it. And also stop putting it in your hand, hide it. Put it in your back pocket, put it in your hoodie pouch. If you have treats like this, your dog only focuses on your hand and they move all over the place to catch it. The treat should be hidden. I shouldn't have treats in my hand when I do my training session. Sit, down, stay, come. You do good, good, the treat comes out. Use the kibble, hide the treat. Next question. How do I get our nine month old puppy to stop nipping, biting at us when he is excited. We have tried to ignore this behavior, but Can't we have it. children yep. that mm -hmm. he also does this too. Mm -hmm. How do we get our puppy to stop jumping on people when they come in the door? So yeah, yeah. so you're having two issues that, re that come. So this is why I always talk about this. 
an outcome of a problem, right? So we have a nine month old dog, overexcited little bugger, and when they get too much energy, they do something wrong, all right? So there, there's four things I want you to focus on. The first and most important thing is how do I redirect that energy into something productive? Obedience training, leash training, something like that. I wanna do something with my dog because it sounds like I'm probably not doing enough. Number two, oh, by the way, side note, after you exercise your dog and you do an obedience session and you play with them, put them in the kennel. Put them in the kennel for an hour. Even in the evening, even though he's been in the crate all night and all day, you take him out, you exercise him, put him back into the kennel. You're not using enough, I can guarantee you that much. Not as punishment, it's preemptive. I've already done everything with you. You go into your crate for 45 minutes to an hour, leave us all alone, we come back out, we do our work. Start treating your dog more like a dog, not like um, uh, just your buddy, right? You're, he's, he's your working dog. Now, uh, the other thing, so we have uh, redirection through obedience training. I can redirect through um, toys or bones or something like that, redirect through walk, and then eventually I could correct them. But here's the thing, if I'm not doing that stuff in the first place, do I really wanna correct my dog? Probably not. It's not gonna be effective, and I can guarantee it won't last long. Um, but if my dog started to nip, what could you do? You could leave a drag leash, he starts to nip. No, he doesn't listen, correction. This always works better if, this always works better if, my dog is trained on how to walk on a leash because then he understands the training call, he understands what no means, and he understands the correction afterwards so he shuts off quicker. So that's how I would go about this. But always with a young dog, you gotta make sure you're doing enough with him before you try correcting. Next question. Our female black lab will constantly turn around in circles during walks. She does it about every 25 feet or so and I have to correct her and shorten the lead to get her to stop. Never had this issue with any of our other dogs. It seems like she may be nervous and mm. is just being protective. Mm. Mm. Any ideas? Yeah, it's more like an OCD thing. It's not, <clears throat> excuse me, it's nothing to do with protection. So your dog is getting so like, like this almost. Uh, the same reason that people like will bite their fingernails and start to tremble and shake. It's just like, oh my God, I don't know what's going on. Here's what I would do. Stop going in straight lines. Start slowing the walk down for this dog. So what, what, what does that mean? I go on my walk, maybe before, because it says every 25 whatever seconds, 25 maybe, feet. oh, 25 feet, maybe once I get to 15 feet, I spin and I make my dog go this way now, right? And when I say spin, not one spin, just immediate U-turn, 180. But sit, good job, food, heel, start walking, heel, spin. Um, we, once again, this is one of those things that we put on our page a lot is these little training sessions that we do with dogs. I would perfect this shit. Do not worry about going a half mile or two miles or three miles. Worry about going 20 feet and just perfecting 20 feet, then perfecting 40 feet. You can even do it in your driveway, man. It does not matter where you go. Slow it down for this dog. It's way too like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. <sighs> Breathe. He's basically like how I am after drinking this. I don't like, I don't drink caffeine often. So when I do, I'm like ready to kill somebody. Next question. Just, hold well and stop drinking. No, that's, I'm ready to rock and roll. Just started working from home. And we like, can't shake Yep. Just started working from home and my mm -hmm. dogs bark so loud at people passing by the house. I have Kongs, but I have to put them in separate rooms so they don't fight over the Kongs and bones. How can I stop the fighting over Kongs and what are some other ways that I can keep them from barking so that they're not interfering with calls I have to make for work? P.S. Oh, how cold is, Yeah, how cold is it? All right, so here's the thing. Uh, when you have dogs who are fighting over something, right? Uh, and I think the next question is going to talk about this too. So I'll touch a little on this and a little on the next one. I was just reading the next one. Getting ahead of the game, as it were. Um, when you have a dog who is fighting over something, or two dogs are fighting over something, and you give it to them with the ability to fight, you're creating a huge problem. So if I have dogs who fight over bones, and I go, here's bones, please God, don't fight. You each have your own. They don't understand that. They're, they're not going to understand, hey, you each have your own bone, take it. Why do you have to flip-flop? When we do you have your own bone. We talk to, why are you taking your brother's? No, here's yours. You take yours and you take yours. It's not going to work. So what are you going to do? I wouldn't put them in their own rooms. I would put them in their own crates. And I think this, you work from home. The average dog, remember, is going to be left alone or crated eight hours a day while the human is gone. And I don't think you're crating your dogs enough. And I think you, your dog should eat in their crates. I think they should get their bones in their crates. Um, and I think you need to do more exercise in the morning because you happen to be home during the day. So what happens is you wake up, we let the dogs out, they play a little bit, we feed them, I go to work, my dog knows I'm home, is amped up, did no exercise at all. Wake up an extra half hour earlier. You have to do more with them before you work and then more with them after you work as well. Next question. 
I've been trying to get Griffin. Oh, you can ask this real quick. Oh. I, yeah. How do you stop resource guarding over food and toys? Aside from the obvious of just never having it around. Yeah. Let's say you have three kids and the chances that food can be grabbed and then mm -hmm. fought over is there. This dog will attack the other dogs for it. So if the kids are eating, if anybody in the house is eating, the dog is in his crate. Now, Vinny, is that fixing the problem? Yes, because it's not giving him the chance to, fit, to, to make this mistake. Now, I would put the other dogs out of the house and I have to focus on leave it training with this dog. One on one, me and you. Easiest way to do it is with a leash. A lot of people teach it with, with, the, with their hand, they come up, the dog tries to take it, leave it, leave it, leave it. I actually put a video up, it'll go up next week on something similar like that. But we normally teach it with a leash. We drop food, I have food on me, my dog goes for the food, he gets corrected. He sits and looks at me like, why'd I get corrected? He gets rewarded and he goes, oh shit, all I gotta do is sit and look at him. And we practice a lot of leave it separately. You do this with any of the other dogs around, what's gonna happen? It increases arousal, which increases my dog's chance of making a mistake because he's so amped up and he's protective over it. But meantime, dog is in his crate. In the freaking crate is so important. Can't stress that enough. You'll see things are really important to me. Leash training and crate training are two of the most right. important things that you could ever do. And there's no such thing as doing too much of it. Next question. I've been trying to get Griff to lay down while on a walk, but he won't do it on concrete. Mm -hmm. How do I get him to do that? Um, okay, so start to ask him 100 times a day in the house and outside. Uh, a lot of dogs are first world dogs, right? I can sit on my dog bed, I can sit on my couch, I can sit on my human's bed, I can sit on the carpeted floor. You think I'm gonna lay down on this tile or you think I'm gonna lay down on the street? Who are you kidding, right? A lot of dogs do that where they're, they're prissy about it because we haven't asked them at a young age that you're gonna do this all the time. So here's what you'll do. Ask them down 100 times in the house and 100 times outside every day, as much as you can. Start on the grass, then move towards the street. Now, I'm gonna get up so you guys can see this. So once my dog is good at doing it on the grass and he's getting it with a, a lot of frequency, uh, and he's, you know, he's pretty good, then I'll start to go towards the street. I'm gonna ask my dog down. Now remember, you only do this step once your dog is good at this. You don't just say, Okay, now I'm gonna do this. Now you're using a training collar, right? So it's hook, the, I'm gonna hold the leash like this, so it's gonna make a nice little loop back up to the dog. Does that make sense, Jay? Yep. So it's loop back up to the dog. I'm gonna say down, he's not gonna go down, I'm gonna take my foot, you're not kicking or, or stomping on it, you're gonna put a light amount of tension. Now when you do that, it's gonna pull just a little bit, and he's gonna go, oh shit, I do have to go down, because we've never put pressure on our dog to go down. The second he goes down, yes, good boy, treat. Sit back up, good job. So make him pop up right away, let's do it again. Down, nope, down, step on that leash slightly. He goes, oh shit. He goes down, good boy. Treat, make him stay there a little bit longer this time. And you continue. Now you put a little bit of pressure, not all that much, but enough to make them understand that, oh God, I am doing something wrong, and this is how I'm gonna get my reward. You can only do this when your dog is good at the actual command. So if you've been asking him a lot over the next week, then you can start to do that on the street. Next question. You know what, Who's, who asked that question? Was that Kim? Because it was Griff. Yeah. Uh, I want an update, video update. What's the date today? 21st. On the 28th, I want a video update. I'm gonna post it on our page. Don't let me down. <laughs> down, 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 don't let do me it. down. I was gonna do it. All right, what are the best training treats for larger pups? My, come on now. Shepsky, it's a shepherd husky. <laughs> Is seven months and weighing about 80, 85 pounds. There are so pounds. many freaking dog breeds out there. I believe the training treats we are giving him are just too small. I have to give a handful for him to even notice it's a treat. This is all your dog's discretion. Every dog has their own favorite dog treat, right? It doesn't matter to me what treat you use and what treat you don't use. It matters to your dog. Thurman will work for kibble no matter what. Killer, right? no, but yeah, no matter what. Um, no matter what's going on, triggers the same exact way. Xena, she'll, um, if there's high value, she really don't, she doesn't care about a treat that much to be like, oh, I need the treat to do this. She'll take it, but she would rather just do the command anyways. Uh, every dog has a difference. However, when I'm training Thurman on something brand new and I need a lot of engagement where I need him fixated, I use freeze-dried turkey heart, right? It's nasty, but for him, I mean, if you want to see a dog get excited, you pull that out and he's got drool touching the floor for like two <laughs> seconds. Like, oh my God, just tell me what to do today. It's all based off your own dog. I like freeze dried tur uh, turkey heart, chicken liver, turkey liver. Um, I like Zooks. I like blue buffalo little hearts. Um, there's so many different treats that I like. There's a million different kinds. It's about what does my dog like? It's a bunch of small packages and just go through it and see what your dog likes the best. Next question. 
10 year old cocker spaniel with mm -hmm. separation anxiety other mm -hmm. trainers have only suggested medication fuck no she guys has... why it's t it's 10 it's not it's it's still trainable yes she has never been created is it a good idea to crate train her at this age heck yeah you just go slow feed its meals in it daily naps in it while you're around maybe we put the dog in it at night when we're ready right next to our bed you have to do two daily walks a day. And you, you guys, when you have a dog who has separation anxiety, the term separation anxiety is overused and it really bothers okay. me. So separation anxiety, but let's break this down. The dog one is anxious. This is the this most important part. The dog is anxious. That means I have to do more with the dog because what, clearly there's a breakdown in my dog and he's starting to get pent up and built up, right? And he's just like this. I have to relieve that before I can practice actually just leaving him in a crate or in the house, wherever. So the more I do with him, the easier that it gets. On the opposite end of it, I do want to work on crating him so I can be in the house and be away from him because dogs like this have to be neat, they're needy, so they'll follow you from a room. So I can practice crating him while I walk away and do all this jazz. You just take your time on that process. Do not medicate him. Now, if you want to use CBD or something like that, that's natural, okay, go ahead and try it. It's not the end of the world if it doesn't work, but don't give him something that's going to have a side effect. Next question. Our six month, our six month German Shepherd, I'm just gonna skip it, ate her food so fast at first. We bought one of those maize dishes, which yeah. did slow her down yeah. to the point where she didn't eat from it anymore. So we went back to the regular bowl mm -hmm. and she did great eating from it, but now she seems to have no interest in eating at all and we really have to sit with her to get her to eat. We both work all day and mm -hmm. hate for her not to have a full belly. Any suggestions on how to get yeah. her to eat better? I, it's funny the way you worded that, which is funny. Um, because this is typical dog mom wording, right? Like, because... Yeah. You know, it's in his belly, in his tummy, things like that. Uh, it's just funny. So her baby. It is her baby. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. Here's what you're going to do. What's her name? Brittany. Brittany? Here's what you're going to do, Brittany. You're going to put food down for seven minutes. If your dog doesn't eat it, you're going to pick it up. So you put the food down whatever time in the morning. Say it's 7 in the morning till 7.07. You pick it up. Your dog doesn't eat. I don't care. You're not going to hang out. You're not going to baby talk. You're not going to put dressings on it and little mixtures of shit. 7 to 7. 7 to 7.07. You come home in the evening, you put the food down for seven minutes. Your dog's meat, I don't give a shit. Pick it up. Your dog won't eat the first day. No big deal. Guess what happens? My dog gets hungry. I put it down the next day. Don't eat? Perfect. Pick it up. Put it down the next day. And I'll continue to go through this process. I can guarantee you by day two or three, your dog's going to go, holy shit, I'm starving. Make sure no one's giving it extra food or anything like that because at that point, then you're in trouble. If you have to, you can ask your vet, hey, is there something wrong? Maybe there's something wrong there. So we can always ask the vet. I'm not a vet, but... A lot of dogs go through this, like, I don't want to eat phase, but it's six months old, so it really shouldn't be going through this, so maybe we do ask the vet. There's nothing wrong with calling them to give them a, you know, uh, uh, you know, ask them, have them give a little look over. What do they call that? Like, if I go to the... Checkup? Yeah, but I... Yeah, just well, have a vet. Check. Yeah, go to a vet visit. You know what the vet's going to tell you? Everything's fine. Call say it once dog training. Boom. <laughs> Next question. What's your opinion? Hopefully they say that, and they will. What's your opinion on using CBD product hey, products yeah. for, for anxiety I love it. and dogs? Uh, I love it. I, I think it's a good with training. training. Yeah, you can't just be like, all right, let me give him this magic serum and he's going to be perfectly fine and happy and healthy and confident. Right? So the, the CBD will never build confidence. That's on, your, that's on you. You guys have to be the one that builds confidence. What CBD does is it could relieve, uh, relieve a lot of that uh, stress to make it easier to work with my dog. So it just removes a slight, and some dogs react great to this. Some dogs don't react at all. It just depends on the, just like human beings. You flip a coin on how many people right. go, oh, this is great. Like for me, I like CBD for me. Um, I use it infrequently for like back pain and stuff like that. And I, I do feel a little bit of relief. But if I don't take care of myself, it's not going to fix the problem anyway. So what's the point? So you're, yes, use it, but you have to train your dog. You have to train your dog. Next question. Okay, it's a long one. Oh, God. Just break it up for me. Give me the easiest gonna, one. Oh, I don't know. We have three dogs and one home. Mm -hmm. Two one-and-a-half-year-olds. The newest is 10 weeks. All dogs play, wag their tails during play, and romp around and enjoy their play. But once playtime settles... One of the older dogs growls a lot at the new puppy. Because he's the, getting annoying and he's in his face. Continue. Sorry. The puppy will walk past her <laughs> to get to the door to go outside for potty time and the older dog lets out a growl. 
I've been walking everyone separately. They are all fed yeah. in their own kennels, yeah. although none of them have shown any food aggression. Doesn't matter, you're doing great with it. Or that. toy aggression yeah. for that matter. Could the older dog be jealous? Is there anything I nope. can do to stop the growls? I'm afraid it's going to escalate. Jealousy is another overused term that is just, uh, it's not true with dogs, right? So like if, when we use the term jealousy, a lot of people go pet a dog when they're away and they come home and the dog jumps up to sniff them and they go, oh, you're just jealous. No, he's not. He's sniffing you, he's investigating you and you're letting a bad habit go because of jealousy, right? Right. So your dog's not jealous at all. What happens is we brought a new dog into the pack and your dog's trying to figure out, okay, what am I allowed to get away with? What am I allowed to tell this dog? Because sometimes he's making me uncomfortable. My 10 week old dog after a play session, if he starts to nag my older dog, that's on me. I have to be the one to say, hey, you come away from the older dog. I'll either put a leash on you or I'll put you in the crate once again, because now you, got, you can't continue to pester this dog. It's just not fair. Now, let's just say this. Let's say my 10 week old dog is walking down the hallway, nowhere near the other dog and the dog starts to growl. Now I correct this dog. Now I can correct him. But if he's not, if the puppy's pestering him and he's like, dude, I'm uncomfortable. I'm telling you I'm uncomfortable. That's on me. I got to go and manage the situation. Does that make sense? Yeah. And that's the easiest way I could put that. If, if, if the older dog is growling and the puppy's doing nothing wrong, that's not acceptable. Absolutely not acceptable. And I would even start to take them on walks together. Just don't worry about them being like healing walks or anything like that. This way they can build a bond outside too. Next question. How can we get our puppy to go to the toilet outside? We let him out, walk him, and still comes home and poos and wheeze everywhere. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so here's what you're gonna do, Jay. <laughs> Baby gates, crate training. Dog's never out of your sight. He goes outside. If he pees outside, he gets treated. If he's out of your sight, it's your fault. If he pees in his crate, feed him in the crate and make the crate smaller. Stop, uh, immediately take away all of his space. He should never be able to get out of your sight. So the room, you're, you create everything is super, super small, and that's the easiest way to think about it. It's, potty training is so simple, it's just a lot of work on your end. That's all it is. Some people even call me for potty training, I'm like, listen, you don't need me to come to your house, do this. And some people literally need me to come to the house and explain and show them, and that's right. great too. I learn much better when someone explains something. If someone tells me something, I'm not gonna learn. I need to see it, I yeah, need to understand it. it. Yeah, big time. Next question. Okay, I have a five-year-old Pomeranian that yeah. will not stop aggressively barking when people enter or leave the house. What is the best way to stop this? Uh, so you can do it in a couple ways. You can meet them outside on leash, which if you're doing that and you're going on a lot of walks, I would talk to everybody and the mother. So when you're walking, hey, how you doing? Hey, how you doing? Hey, how you doing? So my dog gets used to me being social with other people, but also don't let your dog be on the couch because I'm envisioning the puppy, the Pomeranians on the couch, jumping off and lunging and then running back up to its couch, doing the same thing when you leave. And it's doing a lot of this when your dog, the, there's no interaction between the person and the dog. The person just walking in, the dog's trying to con control the situation. Do a lot of place training, do a lot of leash training outside and leash training inside. Uh, but that's the easiest way to go about this. You, uh, every time a guest is over, there's a six foot little drag leash on your dog as well. So you always have control. Next question. Okay. This one's for John Lee since Vinny never gives her a chance to talk. What does a typical day... Yeah, you talk all the time. You read it. That's talking. What does a typical day at the doghouse look like? Um, it really varies. It varies on how many dogs are here, what the season is. Um, a typical day is I get up. I let the dogs out individually. I feed them. And then we start playtime around 8 o'clock. From 8 o'clock till I run out of sunlight, <laughs> we're outside playing. Um, now that it's winter, because... We lose sun at five o'clock. Yeah. So we're outside playing. They have their dinner about a half hour after dinner. They go out and then I clean, do laundry, answer your guys' phone calls, eat my dinner. And then I let them out one more time between like 9.30 and 10. And then I answer your emails and then I go to bed. And sometimes, <laughs> sometimes Jenny comes down. Oh, and sometimes my mom comes down yeah, and helps Je me. Jenny's the greatest. Uh, she's the greatest. You guys see her in my post and in my story. She is the sweetest woman on this planet. She's a rock star. You know what, we're actually thinking about, so here's the thing, we could talk about this, maybe we get a vote from the fan page out there. We were thinking about having Jenny become one, so Jenny's hysterical, like low key, very, she's very funny. Hate you for this. I know she will, but she's so funny, right? And I don't know if she knows how funny she is, right? Uh, but uh, we were thinking about having Jenny being on the, the Facebook page to comment back on people's comments because she's got like a lot of good one-liners and she's hysterical and she says boom and you know, she says son and all the shit that I say. It's just, I'm like, dude, Jenny, 
You gotta, you gotta do this. Like this is made for you. You know what I mean? Because sometimes I can't comment back on all your stuff. So can I ask, actually, can I answer this too? Yeah. Because no one ever asked me questions about my personal day. So, <laughs> <laughs> so Jenny is the greatest. I know that she's the absolute greatest. So here's my personal day. I'm going to walk you through my day yesterday and today. I, my first alarm goes off at 7.15 a.m. Okay. First alarm goes off. I hit snooze one time. 7.23, it goes off again. At 7.23, I go, cool. I, I turn over. The dogs go, oh, okay, we're not getting up yet because Trigger never wants to get up. I look at my phone. I answer people's Instagrams and I answer people's Facebook pages. Then we go outside. I come back in. I talk to my secretary. Uh, we, I talk to him for 10, 15, 20 minutes. I do training with my dog, go for a walk, come back in. I shoot videos. I answer emails. I schedule. We have a scheduler who does a lot of uh, scheduling, but I do a little bit of that. And then after that, uh, I go train dogs from 10 to 7.30. Then when I come back at 7.30, I answer emails, I answer phone calls. I then uh, go on Instagram and Facebook, respond to those. I shoot videos. And then at like 9 to 10 or 9 to 10.30, I like to try to learn something new about business and try to enhance my business. And then from 10.30 to 11.30 or till midnight, I watch whether it's YouTube videos or like not dog training. From 10.30 to 11.30 or 12, it's actually Vinny time. So one time where I go, shit, I need a life. I need to do something. Um, but yeah, then I watched like Dexter on, uh, by the way. <sighs> tremendous, tremendous, absolutely tremendous show Dexter is. I need a new Netflix show. So if you have any opinions, I watched The Witcher. It was good. Um, but yeah, that was a tangent. I'm sweating. Yeah. How many of you guys really wanted to know about the I, I bet you some of these people were like, <laughs> eh, they left. That's okay. Next question. <laughs> I got to grab more water. Okay. How do I get my t Annie forgot to tell you that he calls me 500 times oh, throughout the day. Oh, show. it's insane. Okay, how do I get my 10 month old Dane to come in when I call her? My neighbor has a doggy daycare. My oh, puppy nice. is trained on invisible fence. The dogs next door are running up and down the chain link fence. Perfect. So here's the thing, right? You gave your dog too much freedom too soon. People who have an invisible fence let their dogs go outside. The dog. Now learn to stay in the boundary, but what didn't the dog know? To come when called. And then we go, shit, he understands the boundary, but he doesn't know how to come back. That's a problem. 30 foot, excuse me, 50. We just put a video up on, um, on our, uh, face, our Instagram today of, of this exact thing. 30 foot or 50 foot Mendota check cord. My dog goes outside on it every time. My dog sniffing 20 feet away. Lucy, come. If she turns, good. If she doesn't, pull. She turns. Holy shit, good, I really, good, 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 good. She comes to me, I make it fun, I give her a treat, I make her sit, I give her a treat, free, go do your own thing. When I'm ready, I call her back. But don't give her freedom and don't get upset when she abuses it. Next question. How to get your dog to stop barking at people after you invite them in the house? Uh, make sure that everyone ignores the dog. Take the dog on a walk beforehand. Make the guests sit at the table when they come into the house. Use a leash on your dog as well and perfect place training. Next question. Two-year-old King Corso, mm -hmm. not food motivated at all. How mm -hmm. to stop them from over greeting the guests? She is not aggressive at all. That's just yep. way happy to see everyone visiting her home. Yep. Wants to stand up and look them straight in the eyes. Not good when small women visit often. Yeah, not good at all. Uh, no one should ever associate with your dog for 10 minutes when they come into the house. You guys included. Never pet your dog when you walk in the door ever again. Walk straight in like they did nothing right because guess what? They did nothing right. You pet your dog because you're selfish and because they're cute. And to be honest, that's not good enough. Walk in. Everyone ignores. No one announces guests. Same thing like the last person though. Walk before you bring guests over so they're tired and leave the leash on so you have a way to control. Practice place training, which is huge. Um, but that takes time as well. Next question. Our nine-month-old Harper gets so distracted outside that she refuses to go to the bathroom. Wind, neighbors, snow, a car, 10 miles down the road. Everything distracts her. We take her inside. She'll immediately try to poop in the house. Take her out. We wait forever for her to eventually go. How can we stop this? Um, I would go back to the same answer that I gave the other people. You, when you come into the house, if your dog didn't poop outside or pee outside and you think they have to, put them back into the crate and make the crate small. In 10 minutes, we go right back outside. Your dog's going to pee or poop. If I have to, though, some people take their dog on a walk to kind of like get the juices flowing, they say, to make them go poop or to make them pee. I'm good with that, too. Whatever's easiest for you. But 
Yeah, don't, uh, when you come back in and your dog didn't go to the bathroom, you're either on leash next to me or you're in the crate and that's it. And you go through this process. Your dog does pee or poop outside, make sure you reward the hell out of them outside so they know it. Next question. How do I get my one-year-old Dalmatian to stop stealing everyone else's food and growling at her daughter? She's 12 weeks. How do I get my one-year-old Dalmatian to stop stealing everyone else's food? Oh, guess where you're going to feed it. You answer this one. Feed your dog in the crate. Perfect. Next question. Ooh, give me some. <laughs> Um, okay, we adopted our 18 month. You're a genius! <laughs> we adopted Brilliant. our 18 month. Can I pause you? Terrier mix. Can I pause you? Bar. Did you guys ever see the Guinness commercial? Uh, from back in the day, the Brilliant. Did I ever show you this? No. Oh my goodness, it's absolutely hysterical. Um, yeah, Brilliant! If you've ever seen it, my secretary Andy dies about this one every day. We talk about this all the time. One of my most overused words. Uh, I'm sorry, you can go ahead, you're good. Okay. Mm hmm. 18 month old terrier mix adopted in September. Mm -hmm. He seems to be getting more aggressive. Lately, I have witnessed him snapping unprovoked at my three year old son Ooh, more yeah. than once, more than one you occasion. Need, you need training. I, you can continue, but this is, a, this is one of those things where I don't want to give advice. Uh, I'll give you the good advice, but you need training. You need someone to come in here and train this dog. Sorry. Keep going. So it says, as in, they were both on the couch minding their own business. Dogs never allowed on the couch. Ever. Not a lot on the bed, not a lot on the couch ever again. And he turned around and aggressively snapped at her face. Yeah, it's not allowed. So your dog's never allowed on the couch. And that's going to be hard for you to break. It'll take two weeks and then you're going to be in the clear. But stop giving your dog the couch. So when you have a dog who is ever growling or biting on the couch or on the bed, guess what? Not allowed on it anymore. Done. There's no hard feelings. People go, oh. And a, a lot of people, and I'm not saying you would, but a lot of people in this case... When I say that, would give me grief. Like, really? Dude, there ain't a question about this. Yeah. It's your kid or your dog, and the dog is gone off the couch and gone off the bed. That simple. Like, I have no patience for that. Um, so that's what I would start with and then do everything else I've said today about the training session, leash walking, building a, building a bond between our dog, crating the dog as well there, during times, everything. But you should have a professional come in too. Next question. What are the first commands to teach a young pup? We have a 10 week old boxer pup whose attention span is short, but he can Rude. <laughs> good. But he can understand sit and go to crate if a treat is in sight. I want to have realistic expectations for him, so training is both fun and, and successful. Yeah, he's 10 weeks. But what are realistic expectations at this age? Don't compare him to anything else except him. Don't, don't, people do this all the time. What should my dog know at this age? Nothing. Anything that you teach him. Don't set any goals. Just know that I have to get better every week. As long as that happens, then you're going to be in business. So what do I mean by that? Like, so what, teach sit, teach down, teach kennel, teach place, teach come, teach leash walking. Leash walking, I would start to teach it about five months-ish, maybe four and a half, five and a half, something around there. All the other stuff, teach that first. Do it with his food every day. Take your time, have fun, but make sure we continue to progress. Build on the three Ds of everything, the duration, the distance, the distraction of everything that I'm doing. Next question. But make sure you do, don't compare them to like, oh, my neighbor's dog does this. I don't give a shit. Have fun with your dog. He will get better than everybody else's dog if you're willing to put in the work. You do a thousand reps, it'll be great. Next question. My dog freaks out when we play Nerf guns. Help. Um... I guess it depends on what you mean by freaks out. If he gets nervous, I would either stop playing it or put him away so he doesn't have to deal with it, right? Because that's not healthy. If he starts freaking out in the sense of like he's barking and running at people, uh, you, once again, you could create him, you could keep him on a leash or you could perfect place, but you gotta build, you gotta build this slowly, right? So say my dog hates the vacuum, right? Or hates Nerf guns. I don't wanna put the Nerf gun near him and train him. I want the Nerf gun over there and I wanna train my dog over here. And I, and I slowly build up, build up, build up, build up until eventually I could put my dog in place or in a stay and the Nerf guns can go around the house and every now and again I'll come back, give my dog a biscuit and walk away. Come back, give him a biscuit and he's going, okay, this is great. But you slowly go through that process. The, the sensitization process is not the easiest thing of all time. Now he's lunging and biting, then you obviously need to put a leash and a training collar on him and you go further away and you build around the duration and the distance and the distraction. And you just go through the process of this. Now. Don't rush it either, but uh, if he's nervous and trembling, either don't play or put him away because it's not healthy for him at the moment. You do have to build the, you do have to build his confidence around it anyway, so. 
Next question. How did Jenna Lee start her dog walking business before she joined Say It Once? I didn't have a dog walking business before I, before I worked with uh, Vinny. I had a full-time job, uh, mm -hmm. a love for dogs, and I... Needed it out. Needed out, yeah. Um, yeah. And I met up with Vinny. Uh, mutual friend, mutual Stephanie, friend. who now yeah. works for us as a scheduler. How about that, came full freaking circle. Yeah, um, we knew some of the same people. Mm -hmm. I took care of some dogs. I and made a bad lack in judgment. <laughs> he was looking to um, expand. expand his his business. You're, you're my first, first employee. Yeah. Yeah. Before Kara too, yeah. Yeah. Damn, how long has it been? April will be five years. Oh, generally just turned 35 yesterday. Happy birthday. You're not you supposed set to, me up for that. You're not supposed to say ladies age, are you? No, it's rude. Uh, <laughs> I lied, it's not 35. I'm 35 seconds late to this next question. <laughs> I called her on her birthday, so this is a great oh, joke. God, it's so awesome. it's her birthday. I call her and she goes, what's up? I said, nothing, dude. I got like 35 things going on. Uh, you know, do you, do you, are you busy? She goes, no, I'm good. All right, well, I'm gonna pull into my client's house in 35 seconds. Um, but holy God, I feel like I just ran 35 miles. And I just went through this whole thing. And then on the eighth one, she was like, why do you keep saying that? What is wrong with you? I hate it. It was amazing. It was amazing. That's all right. My birthday's in a month. I know. Wait for it, guys. Wait for it. I'm excited. I, I, listen, I embrace birthdays. <laughs> how do you create... Oh. How do you crate train a rescue dog that can break the crate open? All right. So, people say this to me, once again, frequently. It doesn't matter that your dog's a rescue or you got them from a breeder or you got, whatever. None of that shit matters. It doesn't matter that your dog's a pit bull or a chihuahua. What matters is the easiest way to answer this or ask the question is, how do you crate train a dog that breaks open out of the crate, right? How do I crate train them to get them out of the crate? What do I do? Number one, I have to crate them when I'm around. If the only time I crate them is when I leave, I'll fail. I feed them in the crate. I, I make them take daily naps in the crate and I probably crate them at night too. So he's gonna spend a heck of a lot of time in the crate. I also want to get a good crate. If you use a shitty wire crate that he can break out of pretty easy, you're putting him at risk to get really hurt, to get stuck into the crate, make sure there's no collars on this dog, but you need to get a good heavy duty crate. What kind? I don't care. Gunner Kennels makes a really good crate. Impact Dog Crates make really good crates. They're expensive, yes, but they're saving you a vet bill or something like that too. You just don't want to buy a really good crate and shut them in and say, okay, you're never going to be able to get out. You also have to train them to be comfortable inside the crate. Next question. What, uh, when guests come into the house, how can we train our puppy not to jump? She's a lab. Um, <laughs> um, all right, so the same thing. That's just funny because I was just like that and that came, that question came up. No one else found that funny. I don't know if you guys laughed, but I laughed. Um, so this is a great question. My, when guests come into the house, how do we train our dog? So we've gone over this one today. So here's what I would say. Walk the dog first, make sure that no guest acknowledges the dog, use the leash, practice place, simple as that. And you're, you're gonna really have to practice place. Some people will practice place with what we call a tie back, right? So they'll actually tie the dog back to like the wall here and then keep the dog on place on a short leash. So this way the dog can literally not get off place. Now, you should only do this if your dog is halfway decent at it, but you can tie them back and say, okay, well you're gonna stay on place while the guest and no one pets the dog. Right, if someone comes in and goes, hey buddy, oh my God, game over. Because then he gets super excited. Next question. Okay, how do I get my dog to enjoy walking on the treadmill? How do I get my dog to enjoy walking on the treadmill? Um, I'm gonna put a post up, it's, good. it's a 10 minute video that I just took today. I'll put it up tonight on YouTube for you so you can see it. You wanna treat it like place. So I take uh, some food or kibble or treats. I get my dog up onto the treadmill, make him sit, give him a treat, take him off. Give them up on the treadmill treat, take them off. Never give the treat when your dog comes off. Always give it when they go back up on. People make that mistake is they give the dog a treat and then at the end the dog jumps off and they give him a treat and you're actually treating the dog for coming off the treadmill, which is extremely counterproductive. Um, I, uh, I, I'll, I'll put that video up though, it's awesome. Use a leash, use treats, just take your time. Dude, the dog doesn't have to walk on the treadmill for the first 15 days if you don't want them to. If they don't like it yet, make sure that the, they need to like it. They really, really need to like the treadmill. Next question. Advice for crate training dog in an apartment. She's fine, wants to sleep, but barks when we leave. Uh, practice leaving in smaller increments. So exercise the dog, put the dog in the crate, walk out for five minutes, come back. Then walk out for 10 minutes, come back. 
don't let your dog out of the crate until they settle down. So if you walk out of the house, you come back in and your dog's amped up, you don't come out until you're calm. Never talk to your dog when you first walk into the house as well. You notice that's a big rule. Uh, but that, that's it, just small increments. On a weekend, you should do that 30 times because you get 15 times each day where you can put your dog in the crate for 10 minutes, then 15 minutes, and the next week in 30 minutes. And it's slowly, slowly, slowly building. Don't rush it. Next question. How to train a dog to not bark at cats. Are the cats in your house? If they are um, and your dog's chasing them, that means one, that your dog is bored and two, that your dog has a bad learned behavior. So you would have to correct it somehow. Correct it with a, a training collar and a leash. Get my dog to focus more on me though. So easiest way, if the cat is in the room, instead of just having the dog look and correct, look and correct, look and correct, make my dog do something different. So heal with me, sit down and stay while I walk away. Then when my dog tries to break it, a quick little correction on the leash and it goes, okay, I know what I screwed up for, so I go back. Don't just correct the dog for just staring at the cat. Give him something to do when he screws that up. Then you can correct him. Next question. If I send you info, will you do a post about pet suffocation awareness? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm, I'm all about more knowledge. What do I say all the time about knowledge? More knowledge is shit. No. <laughs> knowledge is power. Knowledge is power. Come on, baby. <laughs> Next question. Have you ever had a bad training session? Is there such a thing? Um, have I ever had a bad training session? No, I'm too good. Uh, so here's the thing. Have I ever had a bad training session? A I mean, have I ever had a training session that wasn't as, as I mean, here's the thing. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a perfectionist. So like when I come into your house and we have a good, we have a training session, I'm there. So if like I have to stay an extra 20 minutes cause I'm like, oh shit, this, I need to make adjustments or I got to do this. I'm not leaving unless I can be extremely happy. Now, have I had training sessions that were difficult because the dog was super aggressive or super nervous, whatever it is? Sure. But as long as the human felt confident and understands what to do throughout the next two, three weeks, then that's perfect. But it's about progress. It's not about, I can't fix everything in one day. Although then again, most of your improvement comes within the first day because now we've, we've just changed the dog's trajectory completely. Um, have I ever had a bad training session? No, I'm, uh, uh, not in the past three years because now my knowledge is so high. And remember, I still, I have 10 DVDs of, on dog training and education at my house that I've still not watched. I have more shit that I can learn, but uh, no, not anymore. Next question. My two dogs perch out of the front windows. And you also have to remember at this point, I'm so sorry to cut you off. Um, at this point, but it was sitting in the back of my head. I've trained, I'm going to say low end 7,500 dogs, high end 8,200, right? I've seen a lot. So for me, it's like, okay, I can come into a house, pretty, assess the situation pretty quickly. Then we can draw up a game plan, get started. Um, the hardest thing that I would see, have is, is uh, a lot of humans... Um, like have a preset opinion about things, right? So if I go, like if I go into somebody's house and they have a big dog who's really bad, re when I say bad, reactive, blah, 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 blah. And I say, hey, this is what we need. And they go, oh God, I, you know, we can't use that. That's not, that's not that, right? A lot of people have that, uh, some people have that effect on a prong call. They go, oh my God, it's, you know, it hurts people. And people say, don't use it. Cool, put it on us. What I want you to do is take a prong and put it on yourself and then give it a tug and you're like, Jesus, is that really all it does? I mean, really, is that all it does? Yeah. It, you're not gonna sit there and then swing this thing all over the place. You're gonna redirect your dog and then correct when needed and give them something more productive to do. So if I go into something with my one foot in the door and one foot out the door, it's not that the training session was bad, it's just I'm like, come on, man, I need you to buy in for two weeks. Cause you give me two weeks, I'll give you a completely different dog. Two weeks, you follow me to a T, I'll give you a brand new dog. Next question. I won't cut you off, I'm sorry, I apologize. <laughs> my two dogs perch out the front windows and bark at any activity they see. Tips to help stop this. When she says perch out the front window, I bet you they're on the couch. Yeah, no staring more, out the window. No more on the couch. So you would have to ictionate the couch. This is not gonna fix your problem, but it fixes the percentage of your problem. Your dogs probably bark 75% of the time when on the couch. So if you just say, cool guys, you're not allowed on this couch or all couches, that makes that easy. Now, what's their new spot going to be? They need a new... Right, to look out point. Uh, no, no, they need a new spot to, to lay down. Oh. So they would get a place, right? Make sure they have dog beds so they can go to those dog beds on command too and practice individually sending them to their dog bed. And you can even put it underneath the window. And uh, every time they were to jump up, you would just tell them no, correct them if needed. 
that's how I would start that. Don't focus on the barking, focus on not getting them on the couch and watch how much barking goes away. People put their couches at the tables, right? So the dog can look out the window and then they get upset when the dog barks. Cool, just explain that portion first. Next question. My dog barks at me when I'm not paying attention to her. I train her a lot and good. walk every day. That's good, that, that you're doing everything right. The one thing you're probably not doing enough right? That's a good question. Uh, you have a German Shepherd dog, I know who this is. Uh, Courtney, yeah, she is Anthony's client. Great dog, she's got a group class, that's great. Your dog's awesome in training. When's your dog not awesome? When you're not in training. So what does that mean when, uh, after a training session? Where do, what do I have to do with right. my dog? Or a long, Place. long stay, yeah, yeah. So you wanna practice building up your duration of stay for 30 minutes to 60 minutes. So then after a training session, go on stay for, or go on place for 60 minutes. People go, man, you can't get a dog to stay. Listen, you get a dog to stay for three hours. Yeah. It's just about increasing, increasing, increasing. So you might have to use the crate for some of this, but you can use a long duration stay to just get them to go. Next question. Do your pups listen to commands from other people, parents, so brother, do, or just you? Uh, yeah, if, if they know the right words for Thurman and for um, uh, for Zena, yeah, they'll listen to, to them too. Now, uh, will they listen to them as good as they listen to me? Never, and I would never expect that. Just like technically, so uh, say you're a husband and wife, and the, and the wife does 75%, or the husband does 75%, and the other person only does a quarter. They go, man, the dog doesn't listen to me as much, because you don't do as much. Right, so you know exactly. Yeah, some, uh, my dogs will listen to other people if they say the right words, um, but, or if I tell them that it's, it's not allowed, then they won't listen to anybody. Then it's just like, okay, listen, I don't matter what you say, you could have steak, or a corn dog, like in the video. <laughs> uh, okay, one last thing I wanna hit you guys with. Uh, I would highly recommend, Jay, will you do me a favor? Are you going to stand over there? Why? Oh, so I can watch it? Yeah. <laughs> Hold on. Just watch this. What are you holding now? A six-pack. A six-pack? Brilliant. What do you do? Well, I figured out how to carry six beers at the same time. <laughs> carry six beers at the same time? <laughs> Brilliant. Let's drink them. You know, I've been thinking. It might not be the smartest idea to drink six beers at the same time. Don't drink six beers at the same time. Brilliant. Brilliant. <laughs> so we say, Andy and I say brilliant and all the time because he finds that absolutely hysterical, uh, which kills me. So, oh, someone asked a question. The prong is getting too tight, but when I add a link, it's too big. So look for a quick release prong collar and they actually have, um, it's like a little thing of tweezers, the quick release portion, but you can notch it down a little bit. I don't like those as much because there's two ways that they can come off, two ways they can go on, but Hermspranger does make a good quick release collar as well. I wanna thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate you, get, appreciate you guys tuning in. And um, hey, remember if you guys are watching this, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. I can't stress that enough. Once we get a thousand YouTube subscribers, we're gonna do live training sessions on YouTube. Uh, yeah, it's exciting. So we'll have two different live shows. I appreciate you guys. You have a good one. Um, and remember, we'll see you guys next week. Properly trained humans can be a dog's best friend, man.